This is Off to Off Topic, a show where two men with the attention spans of a squirrel try and fail to stay on topic with the day's subject. Where will their oral meanderings take us? Well, stick around and listen, because today's Off to Off Topic Topic is... Ahsoka, the Disney Plus Star Wars show where Rosario Dawson competes with Force users Ron Swanson and Billie Eilish to find the dude from the Eiffel 65 video, I'm Blue. This is a new series. <laughs> oh, come uh, on. You, like... you, yeah, you know those two Jedi kind of look like Ron Swanson and Billie Eilish if you squint your head, turn it just a little bit. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I Ron and Billie Eilish. Like, mm, yeah, yeah. I think my I mean, thing it's is a like, stretch, but it is a stretch. it's what I, I have. I will say, though, it's like... um. I really do like the guy who plays. Oh, blank on his name. Um, Balin. The guy. Sorry. Balin. And he's Balin. Um, I love Balin. Yeah, he, I love that great. character too. He is actually one of my favorite new Star Wars characters in a long time, and uh, I'm kind of sad we're not going to see any more of him. Yeah, it. I mean, well, he's he's my second favorite Punisher, and because uh, he, oh, pl- he's the Punisher, if, huh? He played the Punisher in the lesser known, more comic accurate version of the Punisher. Um, you know, there was the what's his face? Um oh uh, Thomas Jane? No, before him. Uh Dolph Lundgren? Thank you. There was Dolph Lundgren, you know, he was the first pu- like live action Punisher. It was awful. Let's all just agree. You know, it would it could have been better. You know, it's like there were some his hits, but it was primarily misses. Uh, with that character, but you know, it, it was the eighties, you know, they didn't comic book movies weren't really a thing. So and people wanted to see a new Dolph Lundgren meditating in a sewer. Yeah. So whatever it's, it's fine. Um, yeah. Howard the duck kind of ruined comic book movies for the eighties a little bit. People didn't really want to try after that. Thomas Jane's number two, um, or not, not number two, but like the next one up. So if, if you know, Dolph Lundgren four, Thomas Jane is three. Whereas like he's, he was, he looked the part. But the movie wasn't the Punisher, you know, like they they try to make it bigger, like, oh, instead of his wife and kids being killed, they killed his entire bloodline. Like, oh, huh. that, was, that wasn't necessary. And then this huh. kid's like, the Punisher is tied down to a chair. He's like, you know, your third cousin, Giuseppe from the old country He's like, no, we murdered him, too. Do you know his four children? I'm like, no, I've never heard of these people. We murdered them as well. Your whole bloodline. <laughs> And well, then it's like, and then the the skull shirt was like, oh, his kid gave it to him because I was on the island. It was like this some spirit of rebirth, and he gives it to him, and he, he comes up, and he's aware that shirt in respect of his dead kids. Like, no, it's a skull. It means death. That sounds, like, yeah, that sounds kind of stupid. It's stupid. And Did then, they have one of those scenes later in the movie where he's like trying to rescue his shirt before it burns up, and like dramatic music plays? He's like, Papa, <laughs> you think a skull oh, shirt for you? You wouldn't be that far far off, to be honest. Well, <laughs> and then it's like. Look, I I I am not going to say the Punisher is one of my favorite comic book characters. I really appreciate for what he is. I appreciate what he does. I had thoroughly enjoyed his comics, uh, but he's by no means my favorite. That being said, like there were several Punisher storylines that were really, really, really good, and yeah. they kind of I had a Punisher on moment back in the nineties, and yeah, he I liked him. And they touched on him a little bit with the giant Russian that you know that particular line uh, or storyline. Is actually more like that Russian that came in with a striped shirt. He is a full fledged character in the comics, and he's kind of showed up and didn't speak. I am Sergei, the dancing bear trainer. Meet my army of dancing bears. (laughs) (laughs) As they all like driving on little cars and jump on the Punisher. That would be funny. It would be dumb, but it'd be funny. (laughs) Well, because in the thing is, the guy, the Russian who attacks him in the comics was very wordy. He talked a lot. He he was constantly talking. And by the way, after uh, Punisher kills him, they uh, the Russians come in and like take his head, and they take his head and put it on a a body of another like a robot type body or like a whatever. And they genetically engineer him, but, but due to some like flaws in some of their testing, he gets huge boobs, and he loves huh. it. And so he just like he constantly gets like breast implants to add more boobs to him because he is just in love with his own boobs. Anyway. My um, name is Tits McGee now. Respect me. So, and anyway, I'll, whatever. I mean, my biggest issue was he wasn't bloody enough. I mean, there, there's a scene where he tortures a guy, but he's he's psyching him out. He's putting, like, popsicle on him. To oh, make him I remember somebody talking him. about that. Yeah, it's, it's like, like no. the torch burns so hard, he feels cold. I mean, there's a scene in the comics where he, like, captures a guy, hangs him from a tree, pulls out his intestines, and then starts I- interrogating him. Like, that's not the Punisher. He's not, like, you know, trickery. He's very just brutal straight. 
anyway, until you want that PG three thirteen rating, then you got to yeah. change things up just a little bit. Because well, then they they act. Then here comes um, man. Why am I, I'm terrible with names. What's his face again? Uh, Thomas Jane. Oh, no, uh, the, the next... Balin. Um, yeah, Balin. Shoot. Yeah, let it be known. I names are the bane of my existence. I cannot remember huh. names. Oh, um, I'm just horrible at that too. Ray Stevenson, I believe. Yes, Jesus, thank you. Because all I can yeah. think is Ray Stevenson do saying the streak. Oh yes, they call him the streak. Look at that so, man. What? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. That's outside of my wheelhouse. I don't know what you're talking about. It's uh, a song from like the 70s. Don't okay, look, Margaret, yeah. he's streaking. But she looked. <laughs> uh, no, no idea what you're talking about. Uh, he was he was a Punisher, and now. It's funny because the woman who did this movie, she had actually done uh, another movie earlier that like got you know Oscars or whatever. It was a, uh, it was that bomb movie. It was like the Iraq like bomb. Oh, uh, Hurt Locker. Yes, that one. She did Hurt. How Locker. did I know that? Good job, Sean. I, that was a good pull. Uh, yeah. She did Hurt Locker, and then she did this next, and she actually stuck very close to comics, but. In doing that, it actually hurt her because when they did the premiere, they're like, okay, this is really crazy, violent, and uh, whatever. We're going to give them, like, comics. Like, they gave the press, like, little comics and kind of go, hey, this is the the feel we're going. And they left that movie, like, honestly thinking there's something wrong with her. They're like, she is a bloodthirsty maniac. You know, she shouldn't be around civilized people. I mean, it is Re- but the movie was like it really this woman was. is unhinged how dare she tell stories yeah. it's not all cupcakes and, and fireflies crazy bloody and like very are and ray stevenson was great in his role as a punisher it, he really did he nailed it i could it. totally see him pulling that off because he's just um, kind of got that or- badass aura about him and they also had one of his known villains which is a villain called jigsaw which is basically someone he you know carved all his face up and yeah you know, i remember jigsaw so. Yeah, and he did that. And they also did a, um, the ending of the movie was actually really good. They did um, almost a Dread, where, you, did you ever see Dread? Not Judge Dread, but Dread. Yeah, the second one. Yeah, where he goes to the building. Same thing. At the very end was like, it was almost like a video game. He go, They're like, they taunted him to come to this um, abandoned building. They filled it with a bunch of different gangs. Each gang took a different floor, and he had to go through each floor, killing all the gang members. Uh, it so was, it's kind of like the raid. Kind of, yeah. And yeah. so I haven't seen the raid, but I know, I, I know of Neither it. Neither have I, but I know of it. And it yeah. yeah. And so, and he goes all the way, you know, and then, you know, he wins and blah, 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 blah. Um, and of course, uh, that the best Punisher being the most recent one. Um, again, the one? no, the, the, the best Punisher being the last one they did, which was he was in the TV show. He was in, um, they were basically the TV show's version. Uh, Burke something. Hmm. Burke Baccarat? Sure, why not? I mean, I'm okay, sure cool. the listeners know. A crooner uh, from the 70s. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the listeners know. You know, it's like, I, you know what? I try not, I really try not to Google, but I'm going to do it. You can um, Google. I mean, at, I, I usually cut this, out the parts where it's like, I'm going to Google this. So after this, let's move on because we're, we're not talking about the Punisher. I, I'm just doing this. Sure, yeah, we are. We're talking about the Punisher a lot at the moment. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that's not the point of the show. John Berth- Berthenol. John oh, Berthal. I kind of yeah. heard that name. Bernthal. John Bernthal. Bernthal, not uh, Berthal yeah. Mall. No, John Bernthal. He was actually really good. Like, he was a great Punisher. Um, he um, wasn't as comic accurate as Ray Stevenson was, but he, I will say, though, he he was the best. I really do enjoy, like, his version of it. It does kind of annoy me that he didn't go, you know, it took um, his appearance in Daredevil and his appearance going through um two seasons full of like backstory crap for him finally just to be like the punish that we all know like it's the last like 15 minutes of the la- final episode of the second season that's when he's like okay now he's got all the backstory out of the way now he's just going after street thugs you know he's he's out there just murdering people which is fine that's the punisher's right. thing yeah so ray stevenson all this to be said we took way too much time on the punisher but ray stevenson um He's one of my favorite actors that I never think about. You know what I mean? Now I'm thinking uh, about Ron Swanson as the Punisher. That could be interesting. Ron, that would be interesting. <laughs> Just literally the Ron Swanson character playing the Punisher. You know I'm here to murder you, correct? <laughs> Give me he all was, your bullets. Every last bullet in the store. I know you think I'm talking about just a few bullets. I also appreciate, like, he was very um, square, very, like, very blunt. He, he felt like a blunt instrument. Because he would Bailey? come in. Bailey, Are we yeah. talking about the Punisher still? No, we're going. We're going. We're actually going to Soka now. Okay, <laughs> but we've been off topic on this a lot enough. Um, but like, uh, Balin Skull and Shin Hati are their names. What? 
uh, Ben Balen Skoll is the dude's name, and Shin Hati is his uh, apprentice. Yes. Name. So Balen Skoll, which is a, a great name. Um, yeah. uh, Skull I, and Hati are actually the uh, two Norse mythology wolves that chase the sun and moon through the sky. Oh, there you, <laughs> there you go. go. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, there's a lot of wolf imagery in this uh, series. Dave Filoni is really big on wolves. That makes sense. Apparently, apparently it are... is a really thing. He's got like wolves on his shirt. He's always writing about wolves. Um, like his character in Star Wars is like Lone Wolf or something like that, or Wolf Trap. I guess it also makes sense because there was some imagery about the world between worlds where it was like wolves chasing each other. Yeah. Like in yep. a circle. The the Norse. Uh, they're, they're basically the offspring of uh, Fenrir. Just right. So you know. Yeah. Yay, Fenrir. So I really did appreciate his uh, rendition of this uh, like baddie. I'm going to yeah. tell you what. I, I He's almost more neutral leaning baddie kind of. Yeah, but like he, um, he's not really like intentionally evil or sinister. He's just kind of like I'm here to do a job, and I've got my own little agenda going on. Well, like a lawful evil type thing. Yeah, yeah, that works. Um, I, yeah, anyway, that's I also really the reason did... I guess they gave him the uh, orange lightsabers to show that they're not truly Jedi or Sith. They're kind of in between. Yeah, I'll be ta- I'll be honest with you. I could. They're like I didn't really see those orange until someone said, "Hey, look, they're orange." And I was like, "Yeah, oh. neither did I." And <laughs> it's like, "Oh, okay, I guess that's neat." I mean, I guess I see more red there, but whatever. Yeah. Um, oh, also, one thing I didn't really realize is uh, the beginning of all these Disney Plus series, you know, it's got the little helmets going by and the colors flashing on them. That's yeah. actually kind of like a uh, sign of what's coming up in the future episodes. Like whatever color flashes on that character, it's if they're going to be good or bad that episode or do good oh, or bad huh. things. Yeah, I picked it up. Yeah, like um, literally on the fourth episode where uh, the Mandalorian chick, she hands over the uh, little orb and stuff and is like, hey, fine, we'll go find Ezra. Yeah, in that episode, like her helmet shines red because she made a bad choice that episode. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of neat. I almost neat. always skip through that beginning part because, you know, the button is like, skip this. I'm like, okay. So I, I guess I should uh, ask, how much do you know about Ahsoka as a character? Um, Not a whole lot. She was Anakin's uh, understudy until she ran off and abandoned Anakin, thus leading him to the dark side in a weird way. Well, yes and no. She, you know, she didn't like, she did. Okay. In some respects, she did abandon Anakin, but it wasn't her abandoning Anakin. She was leaving the Jedi Order. So it wasn't like... The one person though, Anakin had in the Jedi Order, he could look towards abandoned him. Thus, yeah, I mean, he, he, I'm Jedi sure he felt abandoned. Knowing Anakin, he definitely felt abandoned um, because they were pretty tight and he raised her up, basically, and you know made her who she was. And she took off... He gave her the him. nickname Snips. Which is the dumbass nickname? It, it makes me think of Citizen Snips, the crab from fucking Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> Citizen Snips. <laughs> it was a criminal who had all like the animals that would uh, help him rob banks. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. He had, a, he had a crab named Citizen Snips. So that's all I can think of is her just being a crab. Oh, uh, I was gonna say. So yeah, I don't know a ton about of Ahsoka really, other than what I've seen on this and what I've read other people talk about. Well, I actually watch all of Clone Wars, um, so I actually have you know a pretty. Yeah, I know pretty much about her. I will say though, I did not watch all of Rebels. I kind of had to do some, um, like, YouTubing to yeah. see kind of the end of it. I, I, st- I started apparently watching. Apparently, it. it really helps to watch Rebels before you see this from whatever. Yeah, and I, I probably still need to go back and watch it. I mean, I got to the point where she shows up, but I didn't get to the point where she was like the last season where she was trying to train Sabine or whatever. Um, I just kind of saw like the highlights. You know, I saw you know Thrawn. Thrawn's also one of my favorite characters. Uh, but I've liked him since he was since the book. So, yeah, I just I really I've liked uh, Thrawn. I really liked uh, you know Ez. I don't know Ezra. I give or take. Yeah, you know, some of the new, the characters they brought in on Rebels. I don't know. I'm not a huge Ezra fan. That being said, like Ezra is. I don't know. I did see a little bit of Rebels. I don't know. This is gonna be the wrong term to use, but Ezra. I don't know. He felt kind of like generic hero generic yeah i don't know there wasn't much to set him apart from anything else other than just like i'm a scrappy young dude who's trying to make a change in this weird world um i just never i just never bonded with him as a character uh the thing the funny thing about ahsoka though and i went through kind of the same like transitions as most of the fandom when she first showed up like on that movie that came out you know with a little two-part movie they released in theaters um, for the very big episode one and two of Clone Wars, she was irritating as hell. I mean, she was this like little brash, you know, oh, yeah. young. I'm teen. young and spunky and got everything in almost like an annoying my exactly little boy character. Yeah, what it is. exactly. She wouldn't listen to instructions. She was like, she called Anakin Sky Guy. I mean, it was just 
so anyway, she starts off super irritating, and I have since read that that was on purpose. Like, Dave Filoni made her intentionally irritating in the beginning, so she would, like, as she endears herself to Has a Anakin, redemption arc, basically. Yeah, as she endears herself to Anakin, she's endearing herself to the the public. And yeah. it worked. It totally it, did. It does yeah. work. The problem is, is if you don't do it right, a lot of times people will just give up on the character before the redemption arc and just, like, write them off as being annoying forever. So you got to yeah. make sure people actually have the stick to itness to uh, be around for the redemption. So yeah, I watched Ahsoka grow, kind of grow up. So I've I'd seen her um, all the way to the point where the, even the most recent Clone Wars, where she defeats Small, and she uh, I mean, she really does become a pretty powerful Jedi in her own right. And she she gets framed. I'm sure I don't know how much you research on, but she gets framed for murder or whatever. Um, and it turns out it was another Jedi there, and. You know, it all turns out okay. It's like, oh yeah, the Jedi come because the Jedi kick her out her initially. Yeah, I was so about to say kick, she's not technically a Jedi, is she? Because she, no, she yeah, she gets kicked out of the Jedi Order because they they think she's guilty, and then she clears her name, or her and Anakin clear her name, and they're like, oh well, whoops, sorry, um, come back. You know, we didn't. You know, we kicked you out prematurely. That's our bad. But some come back in the after fold. our review board looked over the paperwork. We have decided that we were in the bad. Yeah. And she's just kind of like, no, like you guys kicked me out before you even had all the facts. You just, just for the sake of like saving face, you yeah. threw me out. Good the for her. Fuck them. I would yeah. probably have done the same yeah, thing. Really, honestly, honestly yeah. I would have been like, dude, screw you guys. And so she's like, I'm. Th- there's something wrong with this organization. I gotta go. And so she leaves. And then Anakin's like, oh, she left me. It's like, no, man, she left them. You know, you're a part of them. And not for long. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, even she sees it as, you know, as shown in the show and even shown in the uh, the cartoon series and Rebels, she regrets that decision. Of course she does. You know, um, and she she sees that, yeah, she left the Jedi Order, but she also like Anakin really leaned on her and depended on her and yeah. her abandoning the order was abandoning him. And I do like that line where Balin's like, are you going to abandon this like you abandoned your former master? Yeah, that was good, uh, like, uh, you know, bad psych- guy. Psychological taunting. warfare. Yeah. Yeah, again, I still really like Balin. Too bad that dude had to go and die in real life. Yeah, that, that's a huge bummer. Yeah. I mean, we might get an AI version of him in the future, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I know... I, like I, Anakin I, showing up at the end of the series. He didn't quite look right. Although people say there might be a reason for that. Cause it could be fake Anakin. Ooh. Well, I don't think so. I think he's actually. I think it's actually like it's Anakin, and because uh, it's the world between worlds where anything I mean, can easily explained. I think it's just bad CG. I mean, it's yeah. It I think so. They tried to de-age him a little bit. Yeah, it like mainly look, people are saying it could be a fake Anakin because the lightsaber is different on the character. Eh. Apparently, the lightsaber is entirely black instead of being silver. Eh. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, I, I know. It could just been like, hey, grab a prop out of the bin and meet us on stage. I think four. that's, I think that's that's stretching. That's really stretching, you know, because it's. I've kind of pulled back from that stuff. Ever so, it was the Wandavision show that made me start going. <laughs> okay, we need to start like. We can't be looking at every little yeah, thing. We got to realize writers are fallible, something. and they don't. They're not yeah. always looking ahead four thousand steps. I mean, it. Let's be real. Like the what happened at that show was not cool. And you know, everyone's like, oh, Mephisto. And now looking yeah. in the future, we're looking back like Mephisto wasn't even like hit, mentioned. And like, oh, you know, oh, this is the sign that the world's coming together. No, it was a dick joke. It's yeah, just, yep. It really was. Not even really a good dick joke either. That's no, the sad part. If it was a good one. dick joke, I would have been more for it. But yeah. It's like, boner. That was it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah it but um, like in the first episode, you know, when they, uh, Balin and. What's your butt first board about board the ship? My first yeah. thought too was like, if I was that captain, I'd be very doubtful of there being a lot of Jedi around too. Be like, yeah, that's probably not a Jedi. Well, that was Especially after thing. I think it was like Andor was a, uh, I think it was Andor where they had the uh, fake Jedi who's like pretending to be a Jedi. Yeah, I mean that's got to be a pretty big scam post, you know, Empire. Oh yeah, no, 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 that was uh, that was Obi Wan. Oh okay, gotcha. On that Andor, like they didn't, there was no like, there wasn't even mention of Jedi. Really. No, there really wasn't. Yeah, Andor was just the first one popped in my head. I wasn't that big on uh, Obi Wan. It was okay. I just wish they didn't shoehorn Princess Leia in there. Fuck that. That was dumb. I. I desperately wanted to like that show. I mean, I really, really would like that. And there are some scenes that I think that are really cool. Like, I think the final confrontation between him and Vader is pretty cool. 
Um, it could have done better, yeah, sure, but it, I think it was fine. Princess um, Leia escaped wearing a trench coat, like two kids in a trench coat. Dude, just <laughs> so dumb. I mean, they. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna say here and criticize the whole thing because th- that could be another like a whole show by itself of us bitching about Obi Wan. But uh, that was just so dumb. And um, I'm just gonna leave it there. It was so dumb. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to bite back the the, the urge to like continue the, down the, the path. The bitter bile just to flow through. I, it was just <laughs> spew forth so the bile, stupid, Nathan. Spew it forth. Stupid, stupid decisions <laughs> on that show. Um, oh, and that first scene, the captain of that ship that uh got you know the shot in the face by his own gun. He was actually one of the Marines in the original Aliens movie. Aliens, not Aliens. Yeah, sure was. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You actually recognize him. Neat. I had no clue. I was just like, hey, that's a dude. And then I was watching one of those uh, spoiler recaps and like, hey. But I really, I, I liked how they did And I'm not, I don't know, man. I'm not, fun, I'm not a fan of the apprentice so far. I, I, I don't give a crap on the gender thing. I'm not talking about that. It's just, she, she seems too doe-eyed. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, and a little incompetent. To be honest with you, um, I don't mean. Skip- no, I mean she has a pad one and assistant. She does have that little braid thing going too, saying that she's being raised in the Jedi method. I mean, I guess, but like, look, Sabine. Like, skip it to the, more the end of the episode. First of all, I'm annoyed they're they're trying to make Sabine into a Jedi. It's it. They're that's my opinion. You know, no, they're not trying. They're going to eventually. And I mean, but here's the thing. Like, I keep on saying, like the synopsis I was watching. They're like. George Lucas says everyone has the force. So everyone can use the force. The Metachlorians are basically just like, it's like someone, it, it's an indicator. Well, it's, a, it's an indicator. Like the, the, it, the Metachlorians are a way of telling who's going to be powerful the force by like, oh, this just means that they're predisposed for that. But even if they have low Metachlorians, they can still have access to the force. It just takes a lot more work to get there. Okay, fine. But like, First of all, she's starting this whole Jedi training thing even after, I mean, she must be in her 20s. Yeah, you know, I'm just, let's assume she's in yeah, her 20s. Yeah, I think she's supposed to be like late 20s, maybe 30s. Yeah, late 20s. Like that. That's that's insanely, like, they were complaining about, you know, first of all, they, they complain Anakin when he was like, oh, he's too old. He was nine. And then, then Luke is too old. He was like 19. And so, but, you know, he was able to train. But again, both those people were jam-packed full of midichlorians. And now, and I. By the way, I still think the clones are stupid, but this is this is the world we, this is the world they live in. So here we go. And now all of a sudden they're introduced someone who's someone who's even ten years more than that and has no Metaclorians to speak of. And it's like she's a she's a Mandalorian. Lean on that. She doesn't have. To, why Why are we trying to make her a Jedi too? Because this way, it, all the people who grew up with the original prequels can be like, "Hey, I'm old enough to still be a Jedi if I want to. I'm not no, past I that guess. age." And I mean, just, honestly, that's just a stab in the dark. It might be right though. <laughs> I mean, but she has no force, so why didn't like the what's her face, the his evil apprentice? She just walked in and just force choke her, put like yeah. force blast, force push her against the wall three times, and then stab her. You know, yeah, her yeah, off. that just, fight was kind of lame right there because it, I, but, yeah, it felt like she could have done a much better job. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's like, I don't know, like, yeah, she's an apprentice, but I think even. Oh, oh, yeah, and that whole training sequence between uh, Ahsoka and um, the gal. Was that I on guess, the second episode, I think? Yeah, that was on the second episode. But still, that, I don't know, that drug on way too long, I felt like. It was way too slow. They need to go and watch Samurai Jack, because that show perfected training montages back in the early 2000s. Because, I don't know, we don't need, like, every single frame of a training montage. We can just, like, break it down a little bit faster than they did. Yeah, I'm not again. I'm talking I'm just, about the yeah, like the blind training part. I'm talking about with a. a oh no! Yeah, I totally get it. Yeah, because like, I don't know. That just felt like it went on forever. It really did. This they could have cut off really probably did. about two minutes of it. Like I said, just do the Samurai Jack thing, where it's like splash screen, splash screen, splash screen. She's better. Yay! Well, I think they were also going for slower, though. I mean, I think that was. I think the slow was the point. They're like, oh, here we are. You know, in this thing. And they have this old robot uh, or android, and he's David Tennant. Like, bot? yeah, I mean, and you know what? Fine, you know, he is actually like canon. He was in the show. Um, he apparently is one of the oldest robots. He's like hundreds of years old, so he's thousands, been trained I Jedi. think, even. Uh, yeah, like so he's been trained yeah. Jedi for forever. I can. It looks like he's that. been designed by Terry Gilliam too. I don't know why I thought that, but I saw him and I was like, "That's a Terry Gilliam robot." Yeah, it does look like that. Uh, but he's fine. But why are all the baddies so far 
I mean, I know they're aiming for like, uh, you know, they're going for Disney Plus, so they don't want to be cutting heads off of people. But I mean, why are they leaning so hard on robots or androids? Just it seems like all the baddies they are fighting so far have been androids. Even the first yeah, because you can kill androids, androids wholesale and people don't feel bad. That's my but, guess again. And, and you're probably right. You are probably right. And I know it's one thing. And yes, I'm well aware we blew up a whole Death Star worth of people repeatedly. But, but that was like in, implied. You know, they're implied. Yeah, that. yeah. Those are faceless, nameless. Uh, you know, CGI characters in the background, quote unquote CGI characters. Uh, but like again, though, going back to the Clone Wars, which you know kind of birthed all this, where Ahsoka came from, uh, Clone Wars was not shy about killing people. They kill people all the time. In um, in very like harsh ways. I mean, they they did not shy away from that. It broke necks. People they died on screen a lot, and so I know like human people's different animation, but yeah. And I don't one know. scene that a lot of people are kind of bitching about that I kind of agree with sort of stupid that has to do with the uh, androids is there is one scene where uh, Sabine just like punches an android in the head and it's like ow. It's like I don't know. If a human punching a robot in the head should really affect it. I mean, uh, right. Well, I, know we're going it, by, I know we're going by Star Wars logic, but still. Well, and also, like, that would hurt her hand. Yeah. I, if you, if I, I feel like if you or I went up and punched a robot right in the face, it would hurt our hands more than the robot. The robot would just like, that was pointless. Significantly so. Yeah. But in that show, apparently you can punch a robot in the head and it's like, ow, stop that. And let's, let's go back to, you know, episode one again, because we're kind of drifting. But yeah, why is it? Why why do these ancient civilizations rely on Resident Evil like thinking? Like, oh <laughs> for the puzzles gonna, and everything. Yeah, we're gonna hide this super important map in a globe and then put it in this room. Huh. They need to like do this. And by the way, once you do this, that it destroys the podium it was on. And it's like that, well, that room screamed fifth element to me, to be honest. Yeah, that too. It really did. It was just like, oh, that's... And also, too, when they do, like, that sky thing where they're looking at the sky map, that screamed of uh, Skyrim selecting your character and leveling up. Was that space lane so important? And if it was, why was it hidden? You know, they're like, there's a space lane to go in this specific galaxy far, far away. We need specific coordinates, because of course you do, because, you know, yeah, the galaxies are really far apart. There's a lot of dead space. If you miss even by a slight margin, you'll miss it, and you're, you know, you just... You might, there's a very real possibility you can travel in dark space forever. You know, yeah. so I get it. Or possibly but, travel through time using it. Possibly. Uh, I actually have a theory about where this series is going. It's a long shot, but it's a theory. And so they have this super important globe and it has to be taken to another planet somewhere else. So it's not even on the same planet. You have to go somewhere else, a different system. And from that system, you have to go just like certain setting of stones and only from there if you have a ma- if you're uh use magic because that's what she is she's a witch so you have to use like the witch sithy magic type thing and to l- even look at it and it's just that's so complicated for something that's like math yeah yeah and also i was looking at that little orb where she's like hey we gotta solve the puzzle on this little orb it seems like with you know a little bit of time anybody could have figured out that quote-unquote rubik's cube of a puzzle yeah it was not hard it wasn't I mean, you twisted it into a certain way, and there was no real consequences if you got it wrong. Right? There's only so many ways you could twist it. And once they twist it up, all the lines, like, lined up perfectly. It's like, well, duh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only way it could have been better is if fucking um, Hellraiser came out when she did that. Ha! That would have been amazing. <laughs> I have such sights to show you. And instead of pins all over his head, it's little lightsabers. <laughs> oh, that'd be, that, yeah, that would be dumb as shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, I want to see that now. Uh, Cinnabite Jedi, Cinnabite Sith, Sithabites. There we go. Uh, that also too. Uh, going to the fourth episode, you think they're gonna do a callback to Indiana Jones where Ahsoka has like that orb burned onto her hand and she's like, "Hey, I can see this." You know, maybe I can see that. That yeah. I actually thought something like that too. She's like, "Ah, she's screaming." I'm like, are they? I thought the same thing. Are they gonna? Is it burned into her hand now? Y- yep. Yeah, which and, uh, corny, but I mean, by the same token, eh, not the corniest thing we've seen. No, and because uh, I mean, the reason why it worked in Indiana Jones was it made some sense, you know? Yeah, it, yeah, it wouldn't really make sense with a globe that has, you know, 360 degrees of stuff you got to look at. Yeah, that's that is a problem. 
where because on that thing in Indiana Jones, it was that one side. Yeah, it was just a flat medallion, and that was in, but that was also the reason why they were digging the wrong spot because they didn't have both sides, but they at least got somewhere close to the vicinity. Oh, yeah, back to the first episode when that uh the droids blew up and blew up those ruins. Was that explosion just because those droids had such big bombs in them, or was that whole place just like rigged to blow? It I, it's implied that the robots did that. They okay. They used that like they all knelt, knelt down. Which I don't know because why those she, are, that's a big fucking explosion for like two little bombs. Yeah, and like why didn't she just kill the robots? And then and and another thing is, if they sent those robots after her to kill her and take the thing, and even if they failed, they immediately went self destruct mode. Now, obviously, by you know they showed that that thing's not invincible; it can be destroyed. I'm pretty sure that huge explosion would have destroyed it, which would have foiled her plans from the jump. Like if she had, like, let's say um, she got caught up in that and destroyed it, then Thrawn screwed anyway. Like their, their fail safe plan screwed everybody. So yeah. I don't know what, I mean, it did take that lightsaber a lot of effort to cut through that little orb. So it might've survived. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. I mean, as someone who's sending your robots in there, would you want to rely on maybe? Like, yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Maybe we could also entire... blame this on the dude who set up the droids or something. They're like, just put in just enough explosives to kill her. And he's like, fuck that. I'm going to put in all I got, bitch. Boop, boop, yeah. boop. We did a big explosion. Oh, real quick. The uh, Force Witch. She yeah. is actually uh, Bruce Lee's goddaughter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of neat. That is neat. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything in the long or the short, but yeah. I, I, about going on to her, I do, it is kind of annoying that she looks too human. For me, she looks too human. They have a slight little hint of a tattoo under her hairline, but if you if you look how they look in the cartoon, like, they don't look human. They're humanoid, of course. Yeah, maybe they're they, going to make her like a half-cyst witch or something. One that bred with a human. Or just like, oh, it's, it, you know, now that she gets there, she could take off this thing that makes her look Yeah, normal. or maybe it's now just she's... all makeup or something. I don't know. Yeah, something. I mean, and th- whatever. Although just... she's doing a decent job. I like her in the role. Oh, no, totally. She's doing a great yeah. job as the evil villain. I also right. want to make, I, I do want to point out, I like the series about so far. I mean. No, I, honestly, I have been enjoying it too. It's got yeah. its problems, but it, I like it better than a, a few of the other series they've done. I so. realized as I was writing my notes down, I'm like, I'm doing, I'm writing down a lot of bitching. But no, I, I do, I actually really enjoy it. Yeah, it, it could have been. This one actually has uh, some of the better uh, sword fights I've seen in their action sequences, I feel like, of the Disney+. Plus. It's not as good as the movies, I feel, but no, it's got some no. of the better action scenes. I mean, let's the, the creme de la creme of lightsaber battles are Anakin and Obi-Wan at the end of uh, Revenge. Um, and so that that is... that's. It also, I mean, it also kind of went to them too long, but that was like clearly like the one of the better lightsaber duels. Um, aside from Obi Wan to killing Maul in one strike, yeah, and uh, also one problem they have with the TV series is they shoot all of those in that big like virtual dome that they have. So you know you're kind of limited in what you can do with the fight scenes a little bit, as opposed to you know being out in a huge field or a grove. That is limiting, but it's better than a blue screen. Oh, it's way better than a blue screen. Totally better. Yeah, it, better it, for the actors too, because you know you can actually see stuff around you. Yeah, it is a huge step up from blue screen, but you're right; it's not as good as like actually going on location. Yeah, I've seen bl- bl- uh, blue and green screen acting, and that looks hard, to be honest. It's like, hey, pretend that's a giant hell beast over there, and be scared, and you're just staring at like a dude with like a stick with a ball on the end, and be like, rawr, right. rawr, 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 rawr. Yeah, rawr, 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 evil. Oh, what they got noticed in the first episode, Twi'leks, the, uh, you know, what Ahsoka is? Yep. They uh, all have different, like, uh, tentacle-style heads. Do you think they uh, have, like, all sorts of racism on their planet, depending on how your head tentacles are set up? They like, absolutely hey, do. There's a bunch of different colors. There's- is there? Okay. Oh, yeah. There's there's green, there's red, there's blue, there's... Um, oh, yeah. And some of them have them pulled forward purple. and some of them have their head tentacles pulled back. Yeah. One's probably the sluttier version, I'm guessing, of the oh, yeah. look. So, so they do he, actually have racism on their planet because of those colors. Neat. I Darth Malak. I mean, um, is it Malak? Darth... Just a sec. Uh, Darth... Darth Rami Malak? Talon. Darth Talon. She's, you know, she's a, she's a future assist. So it's like... And it's not, you know, canon anymore because it takes place... like. Who she fights is Luke Skywalker's grandson. So it's, you know, it's supposed to take place in the future. But she's red. And, you know, she's no, she's red. And, of course, she has, like, a leather bikini top. And, you know, she's all sexy looking. Because, of course, Twilight, Twilight females are just generically, there's all supposed to be hot. Yeah, they're so, supposed to be generic seductress. 
Temptation. Yeah, she's like red with tattoos all over. Not the same as Darth Maul, but same kind of you know thing. So, I mean, I the talk about Twi'leks, it annoyed. I don't know. Like we don't look like animations, so you can't make it look dead on like the animation from the cartoon. But I, I'm not a huge fan of how she looks. You know, I think her face is too small for. I think that her. You're talking um, about Ahsoka. No, I'm talking about oh, the um, pilot, um, pilot or the general, yeah, the one that's dressed like Launchpad McQuack. Yeah, I just I don't know, like her head, her headpiece is too big for her face, and it bothers me. Yeah, you're right, and also, I don't know, there's something about her clothes and her outfit is almost like too vibrantly colorful. It almost I don't know, kind of stands out as like Technicolor looking. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of these costumes need to be dirty to just a hair or something. Because they're trying to basically copy, you know, the color scheme from the uh, the cartoon series, a little more bright and pastel And I don't know, it doesn't work in some instances on the show. And, you know, one thing I've noticed, you know, you know, she brought me to the point of, like, the Republic in general. You know, one thing I do kind of appreciate, but it is kind of irritating, where Disney, as a, or the Lucas film or whatever, like the general Star Wars, Star War. They are really pushing for the Republic to be incompetent um, because, you know, you go from the Obi-Wan series where the, there's the Obi-Wan series. They didn't really touch on it too much. But in the most recent, like Mandalorian, like they're making them look almost so incompetent. They're evil. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, like the fact in this show, they're all wearing red and one of them stands up and screams for the Empire before doing anything. That kind of no, not that guy. I mean, I'm talking oh. about like the the Republic. Oh, the Republic. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I was Where they're just hurt. like, oh, we're not we're not going to waste any resources sending people out there. And I'm like, how much resources like to send out a few ships? Like, what what are you talking about? Like, there's we're not there. No one's talking about launching a full on military campaign where you're sending you know a thousand ships out there. They're send, they're talking about sending out a small contingent of people to see what's up in a in yeah. thing. And they're like, well, we don't want to ca- cause any problems. You know, the well, isn't that also dead. supposed to be part of like the uh, mystery of, ooh, are they part of the Empire, helping the Empire reform? Because, you know, they're, they are really hammering home the, hey, people from the Empire work at all levels here. So who could be a good guy or a bad guy? Well, true, but they are really, really leaning on the incompetency of them. Even the smallest, the lowest level. Like, you know, she's like, oh, I'm leaving. That one guy's like, you can't leave. And she's, she's like, well, I'm gonna. He's like, yeah. well, what am I supposed to say to these people? There's a meeting. She's like, I don't know. Tell them something. He's like, uh, oh. Is that when they drug out that one poor dude? He's like, entertain them. Yeah, it's just like, what are you, what are you trying to say? Like, I, so we all yeah. we all agree the Empire is bad, but just going off of Andor, while they were bad, they had the bureaucracy nailed down. They uh like all the evil. The, that was one of the evil things about them is they were so good with the bureaucracy. Yeah, sometimes they were a little heavy heavy handed. Oh, you know, there's a, a pickpocket stole some money from this bank. Let's destroy the whole fucking city. Okay, you know, maybe you know, rein it in a little bit. But in terms of just like the Republic, were like, oh, the pickpocket stole something. Oh, let's pretend like it didn't happen. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And yeah, they just let that general walk all over them. She's just like, I'm going to do what I want. It's, I feel like even if you're a general, you're there's still going to be like some sort of checks and balances you and uh, attacked. Sort of like that scene where she walks in. She's like, I need to see the paperwork on all these engines you're building. He's like, I can't do that. And she's like, I'm a general. He's like, OK, I feel like if you're really a bad guy, like trying to cover up, there's ways you can like bureaucracy your way out of that. Well, there's there's a million ways they could have covered that up. I mean, uh, just a million things you could have done. Like, I want to see your files. Well, it's a it's a computer. You can have two different sets of files. One yeah, for right. the Republic exactly. and one for That's not. why I was thinking you were talking about the Empire being fucking uh, idiotic or incompetent because they kind of are in this show sometimes too outside of like a few core people. It's like, hey, have you noticed any weird droids? And also that one Empire droid is just like, yeah, I saw a hundred killer droid a few minutes ago. Why would you program them to do that? Yeah. It's like, what do you do? Like, come on, yeah. man. Like, and then what do you just like, for the Empire? And shoots the gun. I mean, there's... There's a trillion other ways you could have handled that, guys. Literally, just be like, hey, we'll get you your paperwork, go back to the lounge, have some, you know, poisoned tea, and we'll bring you the paperwork in an hour, all right? And, I mean, they're also leaning really hard on, like, oh, we have all these uh, former Imperials where we made them, you know, pinky swear that they're not going to do bad anymore, so we're good. (laughs) And, I mean, I totally get it. Like, you know... It's the same thing even nowadays when you go and take over, like when the America goes over, take over country. Oh, yeah. I mean, just because they worked in the Iraqi government doesn't mean you can throw them in jail automatically because a lot right. of them are just I mean, there for a fucking job. Exactly. Like they they needed to feed their family. They came in and they they worked. 
And so, I mean, yeah, what they were doing was probably horrific, but they worked. And yeah, you go, or I mean, the sometimes they don't thing, even know what they're doing too. It's just like, hey, man, I just fill out paperwork all day in an office. Yeah, I mean, I I did ones and zeros. What do you? Yeah. What do you want me? Yeah, to granted, do? I was working for the bad guys, but I was literally in my cubicle doing stuff. I wasn't out shooting people. I was just like, oh, yeah. okay, well, we got a lot this much grain this week. I mean, I I went to work, I clocked in, I I data entried, and then yeah, I left. I like, yeah. Well, I'm do a, you know what you're entering data on? It's like I have no fucking clue, dude. It's yeah. numbers. <laughs> I'm a I'm a 50 pound Ugnaught. What am I gonna do <laughs> against you know uh, a battalion of stormtroopers led by a giant six foot black dude in armor, <laughs> like with a sword who can kill me from a distance? Like <laughs> right. he could kill me without even looking in my direction. <laughs> I know. It's like, well, what do right. you do? Yeah, I am out of my lane here. I'm 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 good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it is. It's really frustrating. And like in the rebels, they show what they even go and sabotage. Like if Thrawn was in charge, I mean, there was a whole episode where he went in to his factory, and he's just like, okay, there's been there's more accidents coming out of this factory than any other. Going forward, anything you make, you have to test personally before it goes out. <laughs> and, he's, and yeah, that's a good way to stop yeah. sabotage. If yeah. you're good, you know, even if you do sabotage something, it's probably gonna blow up on you, killing you. So it's, yeah, I mean, one thing about Animal Thrawn, though, that I'm actually really looking forward to him coming back is of all the uh, the villains out there, you know, Darth Vader had his, you know, yeah, he was smart, but he was also like very brutal and he was, he's more cunning than anything else. It just, well, I mean, cunning, never mind, put it back, put that back. He, he was smart, but he was just very brutal in the way he was a blunt object, you know, where and the Palpatine was a lot more cunning and used his brain. And, you know, that's how he got in charge of everything. And Thrawn's like him. Thrawn is super cunning. He Stare could, at the art and be like, I know everything about you now. Yeah, that's exactly like, what Well, that's do. terrifying. And it's just, I don't know. The, yeah. I really hope they lean that on. They don't dumb him down. That yeah, said, uh, that's though, what I'm what... terrified of is because they're already making so much of the Empire seem like dumb incompetence that... Literally, Thrawn just has to have, like, a room temperature IQ, and he'll seem smarter than most of them. Well, and also, like, I don't know what they're talking about leaning on, like, particularly the Jedi going, oh, we're going to get this guy. He's super powerful. Like, no, he was a great, like, he was a gr- brilliant military mind. He was cunning as hell. You know, he was formidable physically as long as you had four powers. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, he is by far, like, a very formidable, formidable enemy. But he wasn't magic. I mean, that was the whole thing. Like in the books, even in the books, like he he found a way around the force thing. But he found a creature that repelled the force, and he had that on on his person at all times. I, I'm just really looking forward to seeing what they do with it. I, I think it's going to come out pretty cool. And also, isn't Mads Mads Mikkelsen is playing him, isn't he? Hmm. Yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah, he's the guy who voiced him in the in the cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, looks pretty which good I'm, as him too, kind of. I mean, as good as you yeah, can make some, somebody who's blue look. Yeah, I mean, I'm I am excited that they uh, I don't know, like I just kind of wish they got someone a little more, I don't know. He looks fine. He looks fine. I mean, he's fine. <laughs> I just huh. I don't know what I was expecting. I was expecting someone because honestly, the biggest thing is his face. He's not muscular. He doesn't really, his body, it's like I was wanting someone whose face is a lot more like chiseled. That's dumb. Yeah, I mean, I realized little... Or a little more weathered kind of, or something, maybe, or I don't know. maybe I don't know. Yeah. Just, I mean, he looks fine. Again, he looks fine. It, uh, we'll see how he looks. I've seen like small snippets. And yeah, I'll we haven't honest, actually seen him like talking or in motion, really. Just like, yeah, still the small snippet of the scene I haven't been too thrilled with, but I'm a reserve um, my judgment. Yeah. Hey, you know those little cat things with the bird feet in this uh, show? Don't they yeah. kind of remind you of Sam from Sam and Max just a little bit? I think it's the big toothy grin they have. Remember Sam and Max from back in the day? Yeah. Okay. So I'm guessing, no, they don't remind you of that a little bit. <laughs> uh, a little bit. Yeah, they, I think it's do. just the, the fact they're white with a big toothy smile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, and I don't know. They have names like something cats, but whatever. Oh, lol cats or something like that. It's something like cats. That. Or, I keep on doing like LOL cats, but I don't think it's quite that. <laughs> 
So anyway, I guess we're you know skipping. We're kind of skipping all around. What yeah, do you think I re- yeah, I kind of am because I realized also my notes started off taking them pretty good with episode one, and then they just kind of went all over the place because I was like, yeah, and I mean, and there's some things we don't really need to talk about. Like the space battle was kind of like whatever. Oh, I, mean, I thought that one was dumb where she's fighting on the wings of the thing, and that that's can't, they've done that before. They've done that. A few I times. know. It just, I don't. But yeah, it, honestly, one, it does come across better cartoons, kind of. But two, here's the thing: she's standing on a plane. Shoot the plane. Don't yep. shoot her. I was gonna say. I that. I mean, like, my for love of fucking god, she's flipping around. Okay, don't shoot her. Shoot thing that's still. You blow that up. She's just gonna float away, and then you yeah, gotta deal with it. Then just leave her alone. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But then, or and also, I think what? the scene that's really stupid is where she's like floating along, and you hear her yell out, "Have you got it working yet?" or something like that. It's just like huh, I don't know. It looked more cheesy or corny than did you know dramatic. I mean, one thing people kind of pointed out was also like um, Star Killer, but Star Killer was just um, he was much more of a badass. But Star Killer actually grabbed spaceships out of the air. And I don't know, she, I mean, he made a Star Destroyer crash. So he was insanely, I don't, I'm not expecting that from these people on the show, but like, why didn't she yeah, throw they a had lightsaber? Darth Vader do it, but yeah. Why didn't she, why didn't she throw a lightsaber? Throw the lightsaber and guide it with a force, cut off. Yeah, the that's a good point. Yeah. You know, it's, there was, the, there were like other the things he could have done, but like, th- again, we're nitpicking it. On a, it just, I, overall, I wasn't a huge fan how that went down, but it, they needed to get to the planet surface. Um, fine. Uh, but then, of course, we stumble into the whole Star Wars thing about it. Um, they l- crash land on a planet. So, l- but they don't know where they're going. They don't exactly, if I remember correctly, they don't exactly know where they're supposed to be going for this thing. Like, it's a whole planet. Like, imagine, Sean, imagine if our spaceship crashed in the middle of um, Italy. Okay, so we crashed in the middle of Italy. Now we got to fix the thing. But, oh, wait, the giant map thingy is in Arizona. Now what? You know, <laughs> it's not It's not like we can run there. I mean, I know that they have Jedi super speed, but Sabine doesn't. Yeah, and this is true. So, again, this is, this is just kind of like um, suspension of disbelief, and that's fine. I mean, they, that's fine. That's that's just a Star Wars thing. They've always done it. Yeah, you know, and like, also, like I've heard before, Star Wars is written for twelve year olds. Typically, I mean, whether you want to admit it or not, it's not necessarily written for adults who are going to pick everything apart. But it's more written for people who are like, "Hey, that's cool." Yeah. Oh, uh, also too. Speaking of like rampant speculation, um, what was his name? Merrick, the Dark Souls looking droid that showed up. Yeah, the guy with the little spinny blade. Lot, before uh, episode four, there was a lot of talk about who he could be. People even thought he was going to be Darth Maul. It turns out. Yeah, I remember that. And yeah, uh, people were like, "It's a reanimated Darth Maul." And then also, my first thought when I saw him was like, "He looks just like a Dark Souls bad guy." And then he gets killed, and like steam or uh, smoke goes blurry out. Me like, he dies just like a Dark Souls bad guy. Well, it, he died like that, and then he had all that stuff come out of him, and it was because uh... he was reanimated by the sisters, wasn't it? kind of thing. Yeah, at first I thought he was made of smoke, which I thought was stupid. That's what uh, I thought at first too and I thought it was really dumb. And then but yeah, apparently when they reanimate people, they uh use smoke or something. Yeah, I I don't know. Like it's the big the, the issue I had, one of the biggest issues I had was um <laughs> why? You know, it's just I have several things like okay, they brought out an inquisitor and it did have to be a named person, but they gave him a name and they did all this sort of stuff. And he better be somebody, you know, he, he come, yeah. he's not going to be. Well, or at least do something he interesting got, before he dies. Cause nope, he's, he I think, you know what? Now I think about it, he's gone because they, he got killed on the planet and they, they took off. Yep. So unless no, yeah, he was just, expendable. They did not care. Yeah. Unless they come back specifically to pick up that body, he's done. And so nope, they, didn't, I don't think they will. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, there's there's no reason to. Even if he was like, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, it's Star Killer," but I, I though I I do think he voiced it. Like someone pointed out one of the little synopsis thing, they're like, "It sounds like him." I think it's right, but I mean, but they just like they like Sam Whitworth. You know, they like that guy, so and they, so they want him, him everywhere if they could have him. Oh yeah, they. I mean, he's been a huge Star Wars fan. He's been one of their biggest like proponents of Star Wars. They they really do enjoy having him on, so I can see them bringing on just like, hey, we've got this guy. He needs a voice. Um, he's a nobody. He's on here a couple episodes. You're gonna say mainly five lines, 
and then you go home. It's a paycheck. So yep. I, I bet you that's that's what happened. And you know what? Fine. Good on them. You know, that, that's totally great. It's just, it, it, again, it's the boner thing. You know, like, oh, who's it going to be? Woo. Yeah, it's nobody. He, he, he dies in five seconds. Don't worry about it. Don't think of you. <laughs> and that's the end of that. Never, don't think any yep. more about it in the future. Certainly do not go online and dis- uh, discuss your uh, dissatisfaction. Oh, here's a quick fun fact. Um, One of the pilots in episode four, you know, when they're flying to go check out the planet and rescue, uh, what's your butt, Ahsoka? One of those pilots is actually played by Brendan Wayne, uh, John Wayne's grandson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Brendan Wade, John Wayne's grandson. Now, there's a thing you know. Not that it really matters in one way or another, but, yeah. 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 Well, one yeah. thing, that it's like, it's, I don't know, that kid, like, people that, that kid is just, why? I mean, I don't know. Like, Oh, the Twi'leks kid? Yeah. Kid? It, I would I would assume. Honest to God, when I first saw him, I thought he was Boba Fett. He looked like the little kid Boba Fett from the prequels. <laughs> I think oh, it's yeah, the hair or something. Bit. Yeah, a little bit. And one moment, I'm like, why are they riding around with kid Boba Fett? And then it clicked in my head. I'm like, oh. I vaguely remember hearing that, like, Twi'leks, um, when they would mate with other races or other things, they would, it would always be a Twi'lek. That being said, though, I, I don't know where I got that from, because when I, I did a Google search and Wikipedia took me there, it didn't say anything about that. Probably so I don't from know, some I, of your homemade uh, I'm not, I'm Star not Wars sure where fan it came from. porn. Right. I'm not yeah. sure where it came from. But that's, you know. From your deepest, darkest fantasies, Nathan. <laughs> well, and I also could be mixing it with um, Mass Effect. Because that's how that's how oh. those, uh, the blue chicks. That's how that happened. Oh, like, that's right. I remember yeah. that with the blue. They're chicks. only yeah, born they were very female. Twi'leks. Yeah, yeah. They're oh. only born female, and they mate with anybody. And like, wait, they are there male it. Twi'leks too? Because I don't know if I've yeah. ever seen one. There yeah, are, there's okay. a bunch of them. No, okay. you, you know of one. You know, I can tell you one I right off the top of your do. head. No, I, I'll give you a hint. Jabba's palace. The one dancing was a dude. Oh man, I've got a lot of th- soul searching to do. No, who is Jabba's right <laughs> hand? Um, salacious. Oh, that dude. Okay. Oh, he's a yeah, twilight. yeah. He's really? toilet. Yeah. Oh. He's just got Babe Fortuna with his yeah. big neck thing. Really? Yep. Huh. Yep. I always thought that. Uh, yeah, I guess it, it does grow out the back of his head, huh? Yeah. He's just he's got a, one he's a toilet. Big, yeah, he's just a one one tuber or whatever. Well, there's a bunch of different like they come in all different shapes and sizes. Like, yeah. They, yeah well, that's why I'm saying their planet has to be hella racist too if they come in all those shapes and sizes. Oh, I'm sure. Head well, things. either that or not. I mean, it's. You know, I don't know. There's like if, oh, if we know every, how. He, if every yeah, I guess we're basing things off of humans. So, <laughs> well, they're also. I think they're implied they're created, and they didn't. Uh, like they're a creative race, and so oh. and they're they're also subservient. So they were a slave race for forever, forever, and so they're more they like more recently kind of came out, and like the females are typically because the the default Twilight female are hot. So that's why a lot of the Twilight. This one, when you see like sex slaves in Star Wars, they're almost always Twilights. Hmm, probably the occasional Ewok too. I'm guessing. Oh, it has to be. What's that over there? Shaved Ewok is has kind to be. of my thing. There, there is no way, like, there is not, you know, uh, someone out there who's like, get me an Ewok. Yeah. Oh, the, you know, in the Star Wars universe, there's some dude who's like, I'm not gonna rest until I've stuck my dick in every possible race that exists in this universe. Even those giant whales, I'm going after one of them, buddy. So going back to the, what do you think of the final confrontation? I I, I was fine with it. Like it, I liked it. Um, pretty bold of that one dude to assume you knock somebody off a cliff and they're done for because it I've is seen enough bold. movies where they come leaping right back instantly. <laughs> well, that being said, I mean the the only thing I can think of maybe like he dismissed it was because if she fell off and went to the world between worlds, then I, I assume that he couldn't feel her anymore. So he's like, well, that's a she's good gone. point. Yeah, yeah. You know, she, I hit, I struck her with my lightsaber. She fell off a cliff. I don't feel anymore. I think it's safe to say she's gone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I can buy that totally. That seems like a Balin thing to do. Again, and I then, really like, like that character. He's like a more badass Obi Wan kind. He is He's a pretty badass, proper, and yeah. And again, I love just how he, how he. I liked how he deflected the bolts. I like how he fought. I mean, he was very yeah. just like, I'm yeah. That not... uh, recreation of the Darth Vader scene he did was really good. Which is getting kind of old, you know. Like, the, okay, well, isn't we this only the second time we've seen it though? Third. Oh, third. There was another one. Luke Skywalker in the uh, second season of Mandalorian. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. Hmm. So I mean it's fine, you know it's fine. It's fine because yeah. it's not it's not a one to one, so it's fine. Um, but I just love I how the, hmm? he how how like calculating it is because he's not doing any, he's not doing any fancy moves. He's not yep. spinning, doing all the stuff. Even when he's fighting, yeah, he's not he sure wasn't off. really. Again, he's just there to do a job. That's what I like about him. He's like I'm yeah. not really. I'm, yeah, I'm neutral and or evil. I'm just here to he do my job. Her, and get out. 
when he fought her, he made the the, the most minimal movement he could do to block and strike. Yeah, you know, yep. he was very just, and I think his lightsaber was longer, so it was almost like a long sword or um, a bastard sword, if you will. Yeah, like, the, like a so two handed sword almost. Yeah, I really enjoyed because he you know, it went with the size. He's fucking huge. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoyed how, that fight. Again, I kind of wish it was faster pace because again, everyone thinks they think lightsaber battles. They think um, flippy, flippy, yeah, cool flippy, flippy. Fights. They think yeah. Anakin versus they think Anakin versus Obi Wan. That's yeah. like either that or uh, Maul versus Obi Wan in uh, Qui Gon. Which you know, I like, mean, those fights are fine too, but I think there's room for both of them in the universe. Oh I mean, yeah, because I mean, they they go into great detail, being like, "There's 32 different ways to fight with a lightsaber, or all the different you know forms and stuff." So, not all of them have to be fast, flippy, flippy. Absolutely not. I just wa- I just want at least to be cinematic. You know, yeah. I want, and it's I know it's it's dumb. I'm reaching for the stars, but I want every lightsaber to be battle be cinematic, which is why. So you want more backflips and stuff, or well, not just, just backflip, more of how like, it shoot. Shot. You know what? I could, I'd be happy to see no backflips, but I want to see like. Um, them going for it not like oh strike strike wait strike wait yeah. strike, some of that might wait. also be the fact they're doing it in that big vision dome kind of thing too even you know? It, you know what you could still have that in a big vision dome you could i mean <laughs> even your like you could do it from a basement i mean yeah well i mean one thing you can't really do well i guess you could put objects in the vision dome but you can't really be like fighting in between trees or in like a warehouse dodging it would just take stuff it, necessarily there have been plenty of um asian cinema where it's fast paced, brutal store fights that you know are cinematic, and you throw force powers in there, then you can kind of look at anime too. Like, there's some, and again, I get it. We're, this is not anime, it's real live action, but there are so many different ways you could have made it look better. Um, it looked fine, it just I, I wanted to look better, and then that's where I cut back to the sub beam and um, the not Sith chick, where it's like. It could have been. Uh, looks, come on, you know, come on, just be be better, both of you. And one of the things about like, um, I remember reading this way back in the day, and I think it was from I saw this from Kotor, the original Knights of the Republic. They're saying if you don't have force powers, you cannot use a lightsaber because if you do, the chances are extremely likely you're going to cut your own head off. So that's why they're like, if you unless you are a force user. Don't even, like don't try now unless you're really skilled like Boba Fett. He used the uh, lightsaber several times in his uh, in all of his career uh, in comic books, and video games, and you know whatnot. And like he's used a lightsaber, but he doesn't use it as primary weapon. He uses like oh shit, this person also has a lightsaber. I'm gonna use it to deflect his strikes, but I'm still gonna shoot his ass. You know I'm not trying to like. Yeah, I'm you all noticed too in the series that Sabine did much better when she was using her Mandalore weapons, and she really did suck when she that's was trying to use why, the lightsaber. That's so why I'm like, I mean, stick with it. You're good. Like you're a Mandalorian. Roll with it. Don't don't try to make yourself something you're not. Because you're you not a just Jedi. Look so badass because you got the sword right there. And like, why? I understand. Like, we're sticking with the main character. We're sticking with all them. You know, we don't want to go. We don't want to veer too far. Introduce new characters because you know we're rolling with the rebel crew. Fine. But why didn't they bring in like a new apprentice? They could like, oh, like they, they could have introduced someone else new. They could have, you know, grabbed another character because the the uh, Star Wars universe is rife with characters you could have used. Sabim could have gone with them. They're like, oh, hey, I'm going to to go on this road. I'm your handy Mandalorian. You need a rocket shot. You need a laser shot. You need someone roped up. You need some, you know, some dirty work done. You need some sabotage. I'm your fucking girl. But you have this this pattern one we're rolling with that could also be, you know what just came to me. Why didn't they take the son of the girl, like the green hair kid? Cause they heavily implied at the end of the last episode, he's, he's force sensitive. He goes, I have a bad oh, yeah. feeling. I feel this. something weird. Yeah. Cause he's a, he's a son of a Jedi. Yeah. So of course he has force powers. There you go. Ta-da. There's your apprentice. He's rolling with, uh, Ahsoka going out there, his mom's all worried about him, but she's like, go out there and learn stuff. And he's got, and who has his back? Sabine. But nope, we're going to try to force Sabine to hold a lightsaber. Because they're going to make her into a Jedi eventually. They want to make her into a Jedi. Especially with that one line. There's one line people are going nuts over. It's like, uh, the droid says, few Mandalorian have become Jedi. And people are assuming that means that there's multiple Mandalorian Jedis that we haven't heard about. There is there is one I can't remember his name because as I mentioned I have terrible names and I, I he's also not in canon anymore but there was there was in the books um 
during the Clone Wars, a one of the Jedi's that ran around with the, the clones um, became Mandalorian because you know in the, in that series before everything went haywire, um, a Mandalorian was not a blood type; it was not a race; it was someone who took the creed. Yeah, it's so, like a cult, basically. Yeah, and he joined the cult, and he joined full hearted, like he was all in, and so he actually became a Jedi. And to the point where he, they basically kind of used him to to seek out other forces, not to hunt them down, but if someone rolled up and they were like a force user or a Jedi, he can go, they're a Jedi or they're a Sith. He just, because he could feel it. And he, I don't know, I can't, I can't remember his name, but I, he was actually pretty, in that book series, um, the Republic Commando series, he was actually pretty badass. Yeah, that's what I always heard. Is there's just that one Mandalorian that made it as a Jedi, but apparently they're, oh, excuse me. People are saying that they're hinting towards there being multiple on this one. Or it could just be people over, you know, analyzing the word few, because, I mean, one is also very few. So, here's a dividing character. Chopper, the droid. Love him or hate him? And his Love sassiness. Him. Love yeah. him. Well, it's because, here's the thing. It's not Cause sassiness. Because he puts his hands on his hips. Yeah, it, well, dude, that's sassiness. He put his hands on his hips and said, oh, no, you don't at one point or something oh, like that. he is sassy. Or no, he I said, mean, oh, yes, you did. <laughs> he is sassy. I'll give you that. But, like... He's also a he is a straight up cold blooded killer. Oh yeah, he's a he war criminal. I have heard him re- yeah, repeatedly he referred to as a war criminal, killing does multiple multiple not people. Not give an f. Like he, I think at one point he, uh, I mean, yeah, they were all um, imperial, but he straight up murdered fifty thousand people, like yeah. on a, a ship, and and just like Luke if did you, on the Death Star. If you listen to his talking, she's like, "Oh, if we shoot this these ships down, they'll crash into the city." And he goes, "If I've seen, if you see the subtitles, you, oh yeah, he's like, and that's a bad thing or yeah, something like so that." What? Like, yeah, yeah, so what? Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Also, that droid is voiced by David Filoni as well. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I, so I do. I, I would. I was not a shop chopper um, whatever. Yeah, when I first saw him, I was like, oh, just an R2-D2 ripoff, whatever. But after yeah. watching him on Rebels, um, nah, man. Like, he, he's pretty hardcore. I'm kind of torn on because I don't know him from Rebels. I just know him kind of being the overly sassy droid from this who hasn't really done much to earn my love. But, yeah, you know, once I heard he was a war criminal, I kind of liked him a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I will say that. Like, he has not, in this show, he has not done enough. To, yeah, he uh, almost just seems more like he's there to sell toys in this series than he is to actually be a real character, kind of, because just because he's just there. Sassy quip. Woo! Look, this droid's got little hands he can put on his hips and be like, burp, burp, burp. I hope he does, like, something more happens with him because he is. Uh, yeah, he, like, kills a whole bunch of young ones or something, you know, didn't even have to. Anakin, wait, uh, do you, what do you think? Anakin at the end? Mm. Yeah, I mean, never mind how he looked because we already talked about yeah. how he looked. But, like, just the fact that he's there. I think it's actually going to be him. I kind of want it to be something else. I want it to be, like, a miss or, you know, one of those, like, force witches, like, fucking with her. But uh, I have a feeling it's going to be Anakin. They're just going to have a heart to heart. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I want to listen to something. Um, one of the snobs, and they're like, we'd be happy if they just, like, the whole 40 minutes was just them talking. And I'll be honest with you, I would like that too. You know, just, I I really do. I I dig Anakin. He's one of my favorite characters. Um, I mean, I like Darth Vader as well, but Anakin was, was great. And you have to understand, Ahsoka, it's like sand. It gets everywhere. <laughs> okay, let me Sorry. embrace. Um, <laughs> That oh, Anakin, either. not so much. Um, but Anakin of the the, the Anakin from <laughs> the Anakin. Sorry, from, just... No, totally. I, I'm with you, man. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm banging my chest on that. Cool. Yeah. But no, like the Anakin that was expanded from the shows. That's, yeah, and that's yeah. cheating. I understand after he that. got his uh, redemption arc, quote unquote redemption. Right. I mean, because they really did. Yeah. Like in the episode, uh, episode one, whatever. He was a kid. He was stupid. Uh, episode two, he was a whiny little bitch. In episode three, he got he's kind of a little being more himself, but it was still I don't know, like it wasn't enough to redeem the episode. He still kind of died like a little bitch at the end. Still, yeah, the end. There's like yeah. But, I mean, the fight was cool and all that, but still, eh, eh. yeah. And but in the series, the Clone Wars, they really fleshed out his character, and you can kind of see how he got to where he got. And so, based on the Clone Wars, Anakin. I really, I would really looking forward to seeing what happens. Uh, I think it is him because I mean, there were so many different adventures he did, like during the Clone Wars and stuff like that. Although it doesn't make sense because Clone Wars, Clone Wars didn't last like that long, but they went everywhere. Yeah, that's fine. But Whatever. It's only, um, it was only two years, but he has eight thousand separate journey adventures during yeah. that time. Yeah, I mean, it's just I like mean, it's Wolverine. fine. Whatever. It's like, 
that like I was the funny thing about Soul, Soul Wolverine way back in the day. I saw it was a Twisted Toy Fair where there's like Wolverine's like he's because he was at that point in every single comic. <laughs> he was just like he, he, here, God. like run around, do an adventure, come home, sleep for like a yep. minute, and then get back get around the door. <laughs> He's like, well, I got to fly from Canada all the way to New York for Spider Man. Then on Sunday, I got to go out to San Francisco. It was exactly for, uh, that. It yeah, was exactly that. So I remember that time period where it's like, hey, everybody loves Wolverine. We'll put him every fucking way. Everything. There was not nothing he was in. Yeah. So, and it wasn't always consistent through all the comics either because everybody wrote him or drew him just a little differently. So sometimes you kind of got like weird out there kind of things. Yeah. So anyway, I really, I really hope it. I think it is him. I honestly do think it's him. Um, I hope that the CG is a little better next time. Maybe like, I don't know if they can do last yeah. minute fixes, but they, they need to do what they did with Luke. Like, okay. de agents fine, but you just need to redo his fucking face. I mean, at this point, cause the de-aging thing isn't quite there yet. Um, cause even when he showed up on Obi-Wan, he looked pretty good, but he didn't look great. You can still tell like, that's not 20 something year old Anakin. That's like, yeah, yeah. that's a 40 something year old Anakin with the, uh, some filter slap. Yeah, on. some of that de aging doesn't work that good. Did you see that one uh, clip? It's a uh, it was a mobster movie where they de aged Robert De Niro down to like his thirties. I saw but that. They, he still did the they, same. He did. They, I, I didn't. I didn't see the difference. Did you, but they had that scene where he like stomps a dude in the streets, and it's literally like a seventy five year old man trying to put the boots to somebody, and it's just the most awkward looking thing you've yeah. ever seen. I, I, I mean, want, it is bad. It, have you seen that actual scene though? I, well, I've seen the movie. Um, okay. I can't remember that scene, but I, I've seen the movie. I'll send it to you later. It's, oh, dude, it's bad. Uh, okay. My last couple little uh, plots here. Um, when Ahsoka falls down on that little path, you know, and talk, talking to Anakin, we're talking about, they're going to, I have this bad feeling they're going to make a mobile running game out of that. Because <laughs> that's exactly what it looked like to me. It's like, hey, start running down this road and jump over things now and then. Swipe your lightsaber to Force Ghost. Remember those running mobile games on your phone oh, yeah. back in the day? Yeah. Uh, as soon as you land on them, like that looks like one of those things that or the uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, highway to hell thing that. They oh, right. The, I can't remember. Yeah. The, I can't remember the name of it, but like, yeah, the snake the, path. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's what it was. Snake Road. Snake Road. That's and what finally, it was. <laughs> I have a way out there theory where this whole series is going and you'll probably laugh at it. But uh, I base this off the fact they referenced a uh, few times. They've been like, hey, Admiral Thrawn, he's somewhere in time and space. And they also bring up these uh, fucking these gates a lot remember last time we saw all these uh like time space gates in uh star wars knights of the old republic i think this series might take us back to the old republic for a little bit and possibly even set up a series back then i have a feeling but, they're gonna be like hey thrawn's back in time as well as being across the universe so we might actually get them pop back set up the old republic few characters pop back to the normal time and then you know maybe have a spin-off uh old republic series that would be actually pretty interesting. I mean, I, I don't they, they I'll, have I'll, to bring so. the old Republic to uh, Star Wars. They have to eventually. They're going to, I, but to I think it. they're going to do that in a separate series. I don't think yeah. they'll do it on this one. Uh, yeah, I don't think. Well, I don't think they're going to like. I think they're just going to basically touch on the fact. Hey, there is an old Republic in this series. They're not really going to do much of it. Be like, hey, there's an old Republic. Oh wow, we should come back and visit that someday. And then, like two years from now, there will be a series coming out. I mean, they I, could, think I mean, if they did that, old Republic, the thing is, that was ten thousand years before the, all this happened. So you can do whatever you wanted. Yeah, you know it doesn't it it doesn't matter. Like yeah. you know, the at that point, there's no cannon holding you down. You know, just yeah. But I think they just I don't know. They at least they feel they need somebody like from the modern era to go back and touch back. That way, they can, you know, we can have a soaker go around and be like, oh, these are obviously the good guys and obviously the bad guys, and set up the whole scene because yeah, not everybody knows about the old republic. True. Yeah. Also, they even reference some of the old republic uh, races in this too. Um, God, what was the one? Just oh the rat Rakitans, they actually reference in this and in Andor. Oh yeah, they, the they were the ones who made the Star Forge, right? Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, Andor they actually even brought it up too. Is one of the little gems that uh, what's his butt got Andor got from the uh, door keep. So yeah, I mean, I'm probably wrong, but I have a feeling yeah. they'll they'll use this as a bridge to bring up the hey, there's an old Republic that exists that we'll go visit again. I don't have any wild theories like that. I just think it's going to be. Um... You know, if if that is actually him, they can't obviously they can't change time, <laughs> but like it could be one of those things where he he was like, oh yeah, I'm here, but when I leave here, I'm gonna forget everything because of course yeah. he has to. You know, um, I don't know, what, I don't know how to explain it, or it's a different version of him, or no, it's just his... I think what they're gonna do is they're gonna be like, hey, when Darth Vader took over, the good part of me died. This is a good part of me, and and he's gonna give her like a five second uh, speech, pep speech, and then that's gonna be the end of it. It's gonna well, no, at the tail end of it, like nothing interesting. Hopefully, it's some because the, the music actually kind of did a little Vader 
Yeah, people are all saying that's why he might be the bad guy in the thing, but I don't know. I just have the feeling he's going to be like, you have to keep pushing. You have to keep going, Ahsoka, for all of us. And that's going to be the end of it. And she's going to wake up like floating on a river. And yeah, or, home. you know, she's actually doing this whole thing where like she feels bad for leaving him. So she's going to like. Yeah, and her. this will be her redemption uh, thing. And and then they'll have this whole thing. Did he did she really talk to him or was it just her emotion? I don't know. I would like it to be something interesting and exciting, but uh, I just have a feeling it's just going to be like, a, hey, here's your raw, raw speech. You just got your ass kicked, but you can't stay down. And she'll well, be like, I've gotten again. this speech a million times. <laughs> We've been scarred by boner. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, we have. We got scarred up boners now. Thanks to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Damn you, Marvel. Also, do you think there's going to be a moment where uh, Sabine has to fight blinded? Like Zatoichi, which they referenced. Because they do put uh, a blind uh, helmet on her. And you think this could be kind of one of those maybe, 20 foreshadowing? I kind of hope not, because that's like too obvious that's, of foreshadowing. Too, but. That's too like regular Star Wars. Like yeah, that's yeah. just what they do. Like it, yeah, it happened with Luke. Sudden, um, they do it like Balin's like they, solar flare, and she's like, "Oh God, I can't see." Yeah, I mean, it's and they did that with um, the Rebel series. Like the that guy got blinded at one point. I mean, just it it's generic. Like part of the training to be a Jedi is putting that stupid thing on where you can't see. So yeah, I don't. Uh, what I don't recaps see I saw showed that scene where from the uh, prequels where it's all the little kids training with the. Uh, yeah, I flashed that. God, that seems that seems so bad looking. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's just bad looking. Then again, it's hard to direct kids, so whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking back to that, uh, uh, fucking Ewoks actress girl. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, just. Give up. Do something else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just read these lines after me. Repeat after me. So, I got my theory. We're going to go to the Old Republic eventually. Because, I mean, they just... This fact, they bring up time and space so often. Also, I did like the part where they uh, hyperspace through all the people and killed a bunch of them. That was kind of... Because I was yeah, wondering what happened if you hyperspace and just, like, went through somebody. Because... Mm. That was pretty sweet. I, I actually... I, Glad they did that. I thought honestly they were gonna kill them all, but of course they couldn't because there were several main characters in there. Yeah, two, a couple of them died. But you, yeah, think. the ones you never saw before until just yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> like the, yeah, the exactly. And then like, there's like the two that we see all the time, which makes me think there's only like a dozen X-wing pilots in the entire fucking galaxy. <laughs> there's like, I feel like okay. we're just seeing like the same guys resorted. It's like, hey, that Asian dude and Porkins are like the only ones around. Yeah, well, it was just it was just like okay, here's a big giant ship with two of the main characters. And there's another guy in an X-Wing who has been in several episodes of Mandalorian, so yep. he's not going to And then there's die. these two guys we've never seen before. Which ones are going <laughs> to die? On a very guys, special episode. Yeah, don't, don't even bother learning their names. It just <laughs> yeah, right. And this one jet, we got Luke Perry. And this other one, we've got right. some person we've never seen before. Who's going to live? <laughs> he's the best friend of the DJ. What happened? Uh, good times. Good times. Good times. All right, so I think we talked enough about this. And uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm really so looking far, forward to. I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing it. I'm looking forward to talking about like what's all said and done about talking about then. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. It's good. A lot I mean, of people really, it's it. a lot. But it's my thing. It's not as good as Andor, but significantly better than Obi Wan. Yeah, I think it's better than Mandalorian or not Mandalorian, but Book of Boba Fett. Oh Jesus! Yeah, yep, beat that one too. Yeah, Book of Boba Fett could have been good if they'd like edited differently or something i don't know no it, need, it, it like, needed more like, than that it needed yeah. it needed better writing it needed better um action it needed better well writing honestly because again with the with, with um it's like writing a panther yeah oh, yeah it, it, it just need well it needed better writing it needed like a plot it, they should have changed the timing of the whole fucking thing there was no reason for him to do be in the back to tank doing flashbacks there's none of that. Like, no, nope. they should have just the episode one. He's, you know, he wakes up, but he's outside the Sarlacc pit and then he gets picked up by the sand people. And then he, you know, he be- comes back and he does this thing. And then the people all get killed. And then he, sh- come, he goes, look for his armor. And I mean, there's no reason to keep on doing the, the flashbacks. It was dumb. Yeah. There was no revelation. The way you're, re- the way you're writing, just... reading it out now, it almost seems like it would have been better as a written short story than a fucking five episode tv series or like that whole like the whole thing like could have been done in one episode like they could have summed up almost the entire thing in one episode and then gone from there like okay, yeah. okay now he's in they they shouldn't have saddled him like he's like oh i'm gonna be a boss now of the city okay well he once he did that he was saddled you know because part of the thing yeah. about boba fett one of the people reason why people love boba fett is the fact that he's just like Galaxy um, crossing bounty hunter. Yeah, no it would have been better if they set him up. It was like as a uh, 
this is a very bad example, but like a Star Wars cowboy bebop where he just goes around the galaxy doing odd jobs for money. Good jobs, bad jobs. Yeah. Or like they could have not could have gone like, oh yeah, well, um, I don't know, a rogue uh, clone uh, with a clone aliens is looking for him because he has unadult he has unaltered uh, DNA from Jango Fett, and so mm. you know he worked out so well they they wanted to get him to make more clones. They can't really He's use good the old clone clones stock. Because- yeah, well, because they can't use the old clone because they were um, genetically altered, and they they were also um, their aging was sped up, so they're like too tampered with. They need another pure source, and because he is a direct clone of Django, they need him. So they start sending people after him. He has to find out who's the person who's funny, and so there's a big battle. Like he keeps on getting he's hunted while he's hunting someone else. There, I just made that up right now. Yeah, that actually it, sounds a lot better. I like the yeah. part where it's like him doing the bounties with somebody hunting him at the same time. Yeah, it, but nope. It sounds gonna... like Samurai shoots Shampoo kind of thing almost. Yeah, Anyways. and so we're instead we're gonna plop him in the middle of a city where he's the leader now, and then yeah. you got to deal with that bullshit. And that's, I mean, honestly, yeah. they could have done that in a cool way, but they didn't. Nope. Now, now, if they made him more I like think a, of a cool way to do that, but I thought that yeah, uh, yeah. If they made him like a CD, you know, underbelly ruler, if they made, turned him into like the kingpin of that town or something, then yeah. Instead of him just being like, hey, I'm going to be a good guy from now on. Right. And then We're strictly good and guy. then take some of your Disney money and hire actors. Like when Jabba was there, he had his his um, palace was always full of people because. Yeah, they're always full of people. That's the way palaces are. They're full of people. When you own right? a palace, you want people there. They're your subjects, basically. Or you're just throwing badass parties. So I don't know, man. It's it's really it's just anyway. We 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 yeah. again once again veered off Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah, well, at least we stayed in the Star Wars universe. We didn't go straight to uh, uh the Punisher. True. Yeah. Although Punisher is owned by Marvel, and Marvel's owned by Disney too. So yeah. Yay. Yes. Yeah, soon everything will be Disney. Go to your Disney. It's like job part of me is like your... yay. The other part of me is like oh, that's actually really bad. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Because I always like the idea of like when they like, oh, X Men's gonna be Marvel now, like yeah, or uh, X Men's gonna be Disney now, yay, they can all be together. And as a as a comic nerd, yay, but then as someone who realizes, oh wait, um, all of our media being in the hands of one company, that's actually not right. Good. Yeah, it's one of those things. It'll be like if Disney buys DC, and also we're just like, yay, crossovers. Oh wait a minute, this isn't yeah. good. <laughs> this nope. isn't good at all. <laughs> Yeah, it's sort of like when Microsoft buys up all those game companies, you're like, is this bad? Is this good? It feels more bad than good. Yeah, it does feel more bad than good. Yeah. All right. Well, you go feed yourself and your kin. And yep. um, we are good. No, today, yeah. so. um, and wait, wait, wait. wait. You got to say goodbye. Um, yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> so we'll be back in four weeks to uh, talk about the end of Ahsoka and what we thought of the entire series in whole, see how close we were on our predictions that we made. And um We'll, we'll you know, be we like then. The are, 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 you look forward to it. Are we doing this? We're posting this like ASAP. Uh, I was going to post on Tuesday. I think. We'll just okay. Do our so day. should we plug our next? Uh, what you're going to do next? Um. Yeah, we could do that. Next episode is going after this one is going to be Alf. Yay! Yay! I loved Alf. Yay! I liked Alf too. I still have an Alf doll somewhere. Really? Was it one of the yeah. 22 inch ones? Yeah. Or yeah, really? Was- um, those things, if I recall from my research for, for a little tidbit, I think they sold like 80 million of those or something like that. It was like one of well, the I biggest 20, toys Actually, you know what? I take it back. I don't think it was 22 inch. It's smaller. Maybe it's 16. Yeah. I I know there was like one model of the doll that just sold gangbusters for a few years. It might be 16. I, in my head, I, in my mind's eye, like it's smaller than that, but it could yeah. be. It could have been 16. Maybe it was 16. They said, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll talk about that soon. Yep. And then we can talk about Ahsoka again. Yay. Yep. Actually, do you want to talk about Ahsoka after a couple episodes or wait until the four episodes are over? Let's wait until four Cause, episodes because we did okay. four and four. Yeah. That's what I figured we we're going to do because after. Uh, after Alf, we're going to do doing a strongman from the 1950s through present, kind of. That'll be interesting. And I've never heard of that motherfucker ever. I never did either until I caught an article about him. Like, hey, this is kind of interesting. It'll make it for a good read. We'll learn some stuff. We'll learn what to do and what not to do as a uh, world famous strongman. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Which will never be me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no right. danger of that. <laughs> Unless we somehow get teleported to some planet where we're just like monster gods who are stronger than anybody there. There you That's go. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks for joining us here on Off to Off Topic. T- stay tuned next week for more Off to Off Topicking. And right. here's our little jingle. Bye. Bye. This is where the ending jingle goes. 
This is where the ending jingle goes. I don't know if we need one. I don't know if we'll get one. But if we do, then here is where it goes.